Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will promote you. For everyone who exalts himself shall be humbled, and he who humbles himself shall be promoted. For not he who promotes himself is approved, but whom the Lord promotes. God makes war against the arrogant, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the powerful hand of God, that he may promote you at the proper time. In this lesson, we will study the principle of promotion from God, and this results because of the believer's spiritual growth. I do want to thank Bob Thiem for his faithful teaching of the Word and for making these wonderful doctrines available to me so that I can keep on growing spiritually and pass this information on to you. Before we begin our study, though, we need to ensure that we are filled with God the Holy Spirit. We have studied this mechanic in detail before. Simply name your sins to God the Father, and you'll be in fellowship with God the Holy Spirit, and once again able to benefit from His teaching ministry. Let's take just a few moments of silent prayer, then I'll open with a word of prayer. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for the opportunity of worshiping you through the teaching of your word. We pray that God the Holy Spirit will give us the alertness, give us the concentration, and give us an idea of the importance of this concept of promotion, that we may fulfill the plan that you have laid out for each one of us. In Christ's name we ask this. Amen. Let's first look at our outline. The outline of the doctrine of promotion goes like this. First, we need to compare the concept of promotion with the function of our spiritual gifts. Secondly, we will look at some passages, our Lord's statements concerning promotion. Third, are the resultant principles of promotion from these passages. And fourth, we'll develop the very important principle, if God does not promote you, you are not promoted. And finally, fifth, we'll look at promotion and Christian production. Now, for our first point, promotion versus our spiritual gifting. It is important that we first distinguish between the fact and function of our spiritual gift or gifts and how and why God will potentially promote each one of us. These two subjects are related but yet they are also very separate. God the Holy Spirit sovereignly bestows at least one spiritual gift to every believer at the moment of salvation. That's right. You receive at least one spiritual gift when you're saved. This is one of those 40 things that God gives to each one of us at the moment we are saved. Now these gifts include gifts of communication, that is pastor, teacher, evangelist, gifts of helps, of administration, of giving, and so on. Now, a detailed study of spiritual gifts and their function is beyond the scope of this particular study. But we do need to understand that there is a relationship between the area of his promotion and what spiritual gift God has given you. As you grow up spiritually and develop capacity for the function of your spiritual gift, God will provide the opportunity for its function. Your spiritual gift may function to a degree when you are an immature believer, but it will not function to its fullest until you are mature. Some spiritual gifts also require preparation for their fullest function. Now this includes the gifts of communication especially. These require formal theological and linguistic training. Or let's say that you have the gift of helps, and you really want to help people in your community. Well, certainly a degree in nursing would be an asset to that gift. So certainly further education and training can enhance the function of other spiritual gifts other than, say, the gifts of helps or those of an evangelist or pastor teacher. Point B here. God always promotes the believer who executes and fulfills the unique spiritual life of this church age. 
This promotion always comes in the form of blessings imputed to the believer who is maturing, that's fulfilling God's plan for his life. As you grow up spiritually, you develop capacity for blessings, which frees up God's justice to bless you. Now take note of a real important principle here. Works, that is things you do which come under the category of Christian service, do not advance the believer in the spiritual life. So if you're not taking in doctrine, and your whole modus operandi in the Christian life is work, 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 do, 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 working around the church and so on and so forth, these things don't advance you in the spiritual life. Works never result in God's promoting us in the spiritual life. Works must always be a result of spiritual growth and not a means to promotion. Now, let's look at some scriptures that deal with these principles of promotion. James, the half-brother of our Lord, wrote in James 4.10, Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will promote you. This system of promotion, this system of divine promotion in the spiritual life, is not related in any way to people promoting people. All promotions in the Christian life are completely and totally fair because all promotion is accomplished by God and by God alone. All promotion is related to your humility, that is, your ability to be taught and making doctrine, the study of the Word of God, the first priority in your scale of values. The basic foundation for promotion and success is humility and teachability. God will not promote you unless you are humble and teachable. And true humility only comes from knowledge of the Word of God. You cannot make yourself humble. Self-effacement, for instance, is not humility. Luke wrote in Luke 14.11, and this is a quote from our Lord, For everyone who exalts himself shall be humbled, and he who humbles himself shall be promoted. The phrase, everyone who exalts himself, refers to the believer who is promoting himself. Now this self-promotion involves Christian degeneracy, and it can be on one of two sides. Now, Christian degeneracy is the expression of your old sin nature's lust pattern. Now, this lust pattern usually swings between self-righteousness on one hand and lasciviousness on the other.